Hello, Synapse community. My name is Ryan Majidimer. I'm a product manager on the Azure Synapse Analytics team. Today is the October 2022 Synapse update. Now, we're going to break from tradition a little bit, and instead of talking about all the stuff that happened this month, we're going to focus on all the things that were announced at Microsoft Ignite. Now, I'm sure all of you are very familiar with Microsoft Ignite because you saw my promo video and then also signed up and attended. It was a hybrid event, they informed me. At any rate, even if you didn't already know that or didn't attend, we're going to cover some of the features. So we've got a whole bunch of features, but I'm going to highlight some of my favorites today. Things ranging from data integration to R for Apache Spark. Let's start with data integration. So for data integration, we've got a new pipeline template for M365. This is going to be coming soon to preview. And what this does is it gives you a one-click solution to create a mapping data flow for Microsoft 365. This saves you a whole bunch of steps and gives you a synchronized and compliant connection to your data. Now you can do all sorts of analytics that you might want to do. We've actually got a demo, so let's dive in. Let's see how much faster it is to identify insights from our M365 data in Synapse. In this case, we're going to be looking at some SharePoint data. Let's start with the Synapse workspace and create a pipeline with our information sharing template in the Synapse gallery. This pipeline extracts SharePoint data sets such as sharing information, sites, and groups, and then aggregates it with AAD groups to generate analytics-ready data. Let's trigger the pipeline. Like magic, the pipeline ran successfully, and the flattened data is now in Azure Data Lake. You can now easily generate information, share insights with pre-built Power BI reports, and more. Next, so you don't have to spend copious amounts of time creating complex pipelines, you leverage the M365 connector to bring M365 data into Synapse. Let me show you how this is done. Let's start with the pipeline with a mapping data flow activity. Inside this activity, there's a new source to connect to M365 datasets via Microsoft Graph Data Connect. Within the M365 source, you can bring all M365 basic datasets together, SharePoint datasets, into Synapse. Let's look inside the user dataset. The user dataset consists of multiple data types from strings, integers, and even arrays. To simplify the experience to convert data into analytics-ready formats, you can use the new Auto Flatten button where all complex data types are now flattened to simple data types. Once we load the data preview, you can now typecast, modify, and even remove a column to meet your analytics needs. Now, let's trigger the pipeline. Once the pipeline runs successfully, the data is now written to the sync in Parquet format. Moving on to our next feature, we have the GA for the SAP CDC connector. So, for those of you who do not live in abbreviation land, that is the general availability for the change data capture, the SAP <laughs> change data capture connector for Azure Data Factory. You may recall in June of 2022, we announced this feature as a preview feature, and now it's GA. So what this does is it allows you to easily connect to your SAP data to do analytics in Synapse, AI, also in Synapse, as well as apps, also in Synapse. Let's get into a demo. It's easy to configure your first change data capture process from SAP using Azure Data Factory's new SAP CDC connector. To get started, I've prepared a pipeline with a data flow activity and a data set pointing to the source object. In this case, sales order items in SAP S4 HANA. In the pipeline, I have already pre-configured some of the settings like the Azure integration runtime, which we use to execute the data flow and staging folder in which we intermediately store the raw change data from SAP. Now let's move on to create the actual mapping data flow. We'll do some simple scenario 
which reads the change data from SAP and applies the changes to a delta table in ADLS Gen 2. So let's simply add a source followed by a sync. In the source settings, we select the data set, which we looked at earlier, sales orders coming from S4 HANA. And in the source option, we specify the run mode and key columns. The run mode basically allows us to specify whether we want to do a change data capture process, which would be the option full on the first run, then incremental or full loads only, which would be the second option here, with the third option full on every run. We, we can retrieve the key columns from the source automatically and just check whether they're correct. Now, let's move on to configure the sync. We're going to use a delta table, which we'll configure as an inline data set. So I switch to a sync type inline and select delta here and the linked service which connects to the Azure data link. And in the settings, we specify a folder path and allow update methods to allow to delete, upsert, and update, because we want to be able to catch all the kinds of changes which come from the SAP side. When you do this, you also have to specify the key columns of the sync. So let's paste them here. And then with that, we're actually good to go. Let's validate the data flow, and that's it. We're ready to run our pipeline and establish the change data capture process from SAP. Finally, we have R for Apache Spark with some key library management capabilities. This is a new feature that's in preview currently. What this allows is for data scientists to use the industry standard R language to do some data processing as well as develop machine learning models. Let's see it in action. We're in Synapse Studio and have a sample Synapse notebook open and connected to a Spark pool. It's a typical notebook, a mix of markdown and code cells. Notice that the default language for the notebook is Spark R, so the R language. You can still use other languages previously available in Synapse notebooks, Python and SQL. Let's start by attaching some libraries from the default set of libraries for Synapse R runtime. For that, we'll use a well-known library function available in the R language. Next, let's load the data from the CSV file stored in the data lake into a Spark data frame. Spot the percent percent magic Spark R command. Using this command, we can directly switch the language to R for the current code cell. We can also preview the data loaded into a data frame. Once we have data in a data frame, we can manipulate it. For example, renaming columns, converting data, removing unwanted columns, and doing some calculations. If needed, we can perform an inline installation of R packages right in our current Spark session. We do this by using the well-known install.packages function. Having new packages installed, we can attach them to our notebook to be able to use additional functions provided by these packages. Again, we use the library function to attach the packages. Additional packages allow for example, to, for example, to create custom data visualizations. In this case, we create a custom chart of avocado prices in different cities in the US. We can also run different types of analysis. Here we perform a time series analysis of avocado prices in Houston. Well, those are our updates for today. Tell us in the comments which update was your favorite. I would love to hear about it. Again, my name is Ryan Majidermer. You can find me on Twitter. You can find Synapse on Twitter, Azure underscore Synapse. Also, if you like Twitter, if you like social media, you, yes, you can become an Azure Synapse influencer. It's very fun and exciting. We do giveaways. There's special exclusive events. I I'm sometimes at those events. There's also titles, challenger, contender, and champion. Yes, three titles, all beginning with C, interestingly enough. At any rate, it's very fun, very exciting, very easy to join. You can find a link in the description for this video with lots of information about that program, the Azure Synapse Influencer Program. Like, comment, subscribe. Catch you on the next one.